If you'd like to know how I turn this unused space in my summer house into this large flight cage for my finches, stick around because over the next few minutes I'm going to show you exactly how I achieved it. What's up guys and welcome back to the channel where I help you with finch info tips and tricks. I've had a lot of requests for people asking me to show them how I made the flight cage in my bird room and so today I'm going to show you how it was done. I'll run through the exact materials I used and I'll also include the precise cost for each section. There were no blueprints, no ready made instructions for it. I had a specific idea in my head on how I wanted the finished product to look for my little birdies and that's exactly how it turned out. So let's take a look at how all this began. The first section that I'll explain is the actual building interior. This was basically the preparation part of the building itself. The majority cost of the materials for this section are now invisible because they're all hidden behind walls and flooring, but it was absolutely essential with regards to my bird's comfort and safety. Predator proofing is something a lot of people take for granted and there's no need for me to go on about the repercussions of not doing that correctly and so to make sure my birds were safe I started off this section by covering the entire floor space with a good strong stainless steel rodent proof mesh. They say that if you can fit a biro pen through the gaps on the mesh then mice can fit through there too. And so for this I used 6 by 6 mm holes and 0.7 mm thick stainless steel mesh. I also covered the walls in that too, three and a half foot up from the ground. Rats especially need to comfortably stand on the bat legs while chewing or perch on something stable. The outside of the building has no footholds, so meshing up to this height was sufficient enough. Once the mesh was done, I then double boarded the floor ready to start the insulation. Battens were fitted on all four walls on the ceiling so as to leave an air gap between the outer structure and the insulation which is done to avoid moisture build up. For this I used a product called Eco Quilt, which is foiled on both sides and designed to keep the building cool in the summer by reflecting the heat back out and warm in the winter by retaining the heat inside. This material was used to cover every inch of the building excluding the windows and the doors. Thermo seal tape was then used throughout to seal all gaps and to avoid any potential air and temperature leakage. I then counterbattened the entire space again to provide air gaps and then boarded the ceiling and walls with 1220 by 2440 plywood sheets. To finish off this initial section I fitted an Expel Air Extractor Fan for ventilation which is hugely important to prevent condensation causing damp or mould and to provide effective aeration. Once this first section was finished it was time to start working on the flight and enclosure. I began by putting up the flight backdrop on the interior wall. For this I used a 10.5 foot by 4 foot sheet of antimicrobial cladding. This is the same type that they use in places like hospital operating theatres and veterinary surgeries. It reduces microbes by 99.9% .9 and gives constant protection against bacterial growth. It's also super easy to wipe down and so as I'm a big stickler for hygiene and cleanliness this was the perfect material for me to use. Next to go in were the base cupboards for storage. For these I used Knox Holt units from Ikea. They measured 60 by 60 by 31 centimetres and so sat off the rear wall leaving a nice size gap which helped for me to fit behind for when I attached the framework. Once the lower frame shelf was up I was then able to start working on the base floor of the flight. To begin with 9mm plywood sheets were used for the floor of the flight and then completely covered with a 4mm layer of coroplast. Then all edges were sealed with 0 VOC eco bond to make the floor completely waterproof, hygienic and easy to clean. The right hand wall was set off slightly in order to have easy access to electrics and wiring and both side walls were then finished off using antimicrobial cladding and again all edges and gaps sealed with the zero VOC eco bond. The eco bond sealant I used is 100% pet safe and so to me it's worth spending extra to make sure that any areas my birds can reach are always safe for them to come into contact with. The two beams for the roof framework were put up next. Next up, 10 by 10 mm rigid PVC angling was attached just above the floor and along all three walls for when the floor trays are in place. This would serve to prevent anything going behind the areas where the trays sit against the back wall, such as food, water, feathers or bird waste, and also helps to keep the trays in place. During maintenance, those areas would still be thoroughly cleaned, but it just helps to minimise anything slipping behind there in the meantime. For the floor trays I sourced six large dog crate trays from a pet store in Scotland. I spent a long time looking for ones that were just right for what I wanted, not just in size but also in design. I needed six but I bought twelve so that when they need to be removed on my weekly deep clean day 
I have another six ready to slot right in so as to minimise any unnecessary disturbance to my birds and so the time that they spend sectioned in one half of the flight while I clean is also kept to a minimum. To finish off the main framework before fitting the mesh and doors I put up a central stanchion which had a 10mm gap in the middle for containing the flight divide. Once the ceiling mesh was stapled in place I added a 10mm aluminium runner on line with the gap in the central stanchion for when the divider is slid in and out of place. When deciding on the doors I chose to go with as thin a wood as possible. I see so many flights and aviaries with big thick planks for doors and it completely obscures the view of inside the enclosure so I went with a 2 inch untreated beech wood for mine. I painted the outside of it with white emulsion and as I did with the flight ceiling I used stainless steel half inch by half inch aviary mesh that I'd already pre-painted with zero VOC blackboard paint so as to give that invisibility effect. I then stapled the mesh to the inside of the doors to prevent my birds from having direct access to the bare wood. Then to finish off the doors I attached safety clasps on the top section of each door and to counter any future wood warping and swelling I drilled a hole in the bottom of each door to add pull pins which sit behind the inner walls of the trays giving more secure air should the frames kick out once they warp. To finish off the interior of the flight I added a 50 by 50 millimeter section of maxi trunking which sits flush behind the central stanchion and serves as a platform for when the divide is in. It covers the gap between the two innermost trays and it keeps them tightly in place. As this was a brand new enclosure I wanted my birds to have brand new equipment too as opposed to using the stuff that I already had. I ditched my Arcadia gear and I went for the M&M lighting kits that I had to order from the US. I bought two of the largest kits that they do, one for each section of the flight which when in place still allows room for shadier spots. I purchased two heat lamps, the dome type with a 50% reducer switch and two 100 watt ceramic bulbs to go in them. They're in place but they won't be being used until winter time only if needed as the DeLonghi ceramic tower heater that I got keeps the room at a good temperature on the thermostat which comes on and goes off via the settings. I also have two heating clocks so that I'm able to constantly monitor the temperature and humidity and I can do that remotely in case needing to address any sudden drops and climbs. Keeping enrichment and both foot and beak health in mind I bought a mixture of perches which were mainly manzanita and java wood, some other natural woods and also some sisal rope in varying thicknesses. I also added some tabletop java trees and a couple of pumice perch swings for extra fun and interest. For bathing I got a couple of the extra large Exoterra reptile dishes. They're the perfect depth to safely bathe in and they have a great natural look to them too. For food and treat dishes I only use stainless steel. I managed to find some sauce dipping trays for treats, fresh veg and egg food mixtures, the type with a row of sections so that I can put different foods in at the same time. I also use this type for the crushed oyster shell too. For the seed and the dried greens I used kitten bowls as they're the perfect size and depth for my birds to perch on and reach into. For this project I didn't really have a budget as such so I'm sure a similar effect could be achieved using less costly alternatives that fit just as well. This was just what worked for me though. Some things may be a little overkill but as I've already said the health and well-being of my birds is of paramount importance to me and so this is just me being me and trying to give them the best that I possibly can.